Hi, I'm Yvonne Pran, and this is You Can Do It, part seven of our series on how to create great communications for the church. This is a little case study that I want to show you in a very practical way, how to use Microsoft Publisher in creating a church newsletter. This is not a complete uh, start to finish creation, but I think it'll help you a little bit, and in other videos, I will go into this in more detail. Okay, here is the before. Um, someone gave me permission to use this, and bless their little hearts, this is a, um, a publication that was created in Publisher, and sadly, whoever did it, they just tossed the template and just put the information in there. Most likely in under a deadline, we all, as I said earlier, we all work under those, but there's really a lot of design things going on here that don't make it as effective as it could be. The typefaces, the sizes are different, the left-hand margin is not consistent. It really doesn't look tremendously professional. But let's take this same material and let's put it into one of the templates. Now, I would imagine in looking back at this, you would think there's absolutely no way a page of all of this would fit into one of those wimpy little templates. They just don't look like there's enough room there at all. But there really is, and I'll show you how to make it that way. When the templates come up in Publisher, this is what they look like. You've got these actually four narrow columns here. That's a pain in the neck to work with, and it, 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 it can just be really difficult. Let me show you, though, what you need to do. You need to go into the sidebar and click on the one that says Page Content. This is what will come up. Now you notice what comes up by default are the three columns. That's just in the live text area. It's really kind of confusing because it's actually four, but they call it three, but you know, Microsoft. But, um, but anyway, you, you've got the three columns there. Now what you want to do is you want to change it from the three and click on the one. This will give you a much easier to work with template. Now the lines don't go all the way across the page, but they're they're much, much easier to read and you really can fill in, fit in all the material that you need to. Now what I did, taking this template, I simply copied and pasted the articles from this one into this one. And let me show you what it looks like. There's plenty of room. I moved up one of the blocks, just added an extra block, and all of it fit. Now, I made one other change. Let me show you. You notice the first article here, church budget continues to be in trouble. Oh my goodness, that's probably not one of the happiest ways to start out a um, page in the newsletter. I took the money news and I put it down at the bottom and you see how I just rewrote the headline. Uh, budget news, budget good news, but better needed. Um, much happier way to put it because there was a lot of good news in there. But you see, it just, all of, all of it fit, all of it looks really good. The headlines are, are really nice and clear. Works out great. Now, one other change I made on it, there's plenty of room for the content, but then you could put in pictures or uh, caption, pull quote, all of that sort of thing. But Microsoft does another funny thing. They do a lot of weird things. But you notice that none of their pictures are the same size, and these things just kind of flow without really being anchored to anything. What I did is I took the placeholders for the pictures, and I made them large enough. You you wouldn't want to actually stretch a, a picture, but you'd want to crop it so that it fit into this size. So see how it fits in. Everything is the same size, fits in nicely into this column. And also see how I put the images where they line up with some text. This gives your newsletter a much sharper look, a cleaner look. It will really look good. Now, let's look at the before and after with the grid lines removed. Here's the before. And here's the after. You see, just by taking this content, putting it into the template, it looks so much more professional. Now, one little thing that I did too, people a lot of times do this because they feel that they need to um, have a divider between the headline and the text. Uh, the person had to underline it. You see here, the division is clear because of the color text, the size, and the spacing. It looks so much sharper. This looks like a professionally done newsletter, and all of this information fit in there very nicely. You have room for pictures, 
for a call out really looks good. So trust those, those publisher templates. You modify them a little bit, but you can see here without a whole lot of really very little work. I mean, less than, you know, five minutes, something like that. Just changing them around and you have a good looking publication. Now in our next section eight, I'm going to go into a few type tips to make your communications easier to read.